Hey friends, today I am hanging out at Epcot. Recently, Disney has changed its policy on face masks and we no longer need to wear them on the rides, indoors, outdoors, actually anywhere in the park except for some transportation. And I thought it would be great to come out to Epcot and ride some rides because I feel like Epcot has the best smelling rides. So, let's go do this. I am sure we can say Pirates of the Caribbean is a great smelling ride, but what about Spaceship Earth and Rome Burning? And then we have Figman here and the skunk scene and then also all of Soren. So if you guys think there's a better smelling park, let me know in the comments, but I have to give mine to Epcot. The reason I'm talking about the smells on rides is because now that we don't have to wear a mask anymore, I feel like that was one thing that was actually lacking a little bit, is the mask was stopping the smell from the ride. I mean, you could smell it a little bit, but not to like its true potential. So I thought it'd be fun to come out, ride some rides, eat some food, enjoy Epcot. I mean, it's beautiful. I think I'm gonna head straight back to Figment and get a good smell of the skunk scene and then maybe hop over to Soren. Spaceship Earth I kind of can always leave for last. It's always a good ride to actually walk out on because it's literally on the way out. I am just so excited things are getting back to normal everywhere. Disneyland reopened, they don't have any more masks, we don't have any masks here, fireworks are starting soon, all the resorts are opening up, like this is amazing. Cause like, you know, just a couple of months ago, we didn't know what to expect for like summer 2021 and it looks like it's really turning around. It looks like nobody's actually going to visit poor Figman in the journey into imagination. Uh, probably just a complete walk-on. It says five minutes, but wow, look at that. Before we get on the ride though, Joy's over there, so we might as well stop over and say hi to Joy. I came over here to see Joy, and then she ended up walking over there, but it brings up a good point now that we got fireworks coming back, no more masks. When do you think character meet and greets are going to come back? I mean, I'm excited to see a lot more of them, and I like how they're out and about in the parks, because I feel like Disney World was always lacking in that. Like, they always had lines that you had to wait, or like in Disneyland, you could just like walk around and bump into some of your favorite characters. So, I like that they started doing that over here, and I would like to see it continued. But now, we're gonna head back into Journey into Imagination. Had to say hi to Joy, but I didn't even get to say hi to her. I kinda like socially, from like across the pond, said hi! Of course, this is home to the sensory labs. Touch, taste, sight, and smell. And it looks like, like I said, nobody's here. It's like a complete walk-on. I would love to see a fully complete Journey into Imagination ride where the touch and taste labs are open. I wonder what that could be like. To our special drive through open house, I'm Dr. Nigel Channing, Chairman of the Imagination Institute. Hello, on your tour you'll see how the five human senses can help capture your imagination. Oh, oh, can I go too? Absolutely not. Uh, this is one of our discoveries, the figment of imagination. Yeah, I know all about the senses. They're sight, sound, ah, smell, touch, coochie coochie go, and taste. Oh boy, here it comes. I can already smell it. Our research shows that smells often trigger the imagination, especially when pleasant, familiar smells come into play. Yes, come into play? <laughs> I wish we can get some mint though, or maybe some rose. The nose would nose for a rose. Open house upside down. Upside down? Now you're talking. That's the best idea you've had all day. Come on, it's time to get back to the institute. I know a shortcut. 
figment was such a great way to start off the day. It always puts me in great moods, and I love walking through here. Soon, do you think the sensory overload lab, do you think this will be opening up in here where you can touch things? And this is where Reckon and Ralph actually usually come out. So it'd be nice to see that come back. I want to continue my ride journey and head on over to Soren, but there's nothing to eat or drink over on that side, so I think I'm going to go this way and then hop back on over to the land. It's hard to do, but I kind of like to keep that ride, snack, drink <laughs> rotation in play. And I think I'm going to head back over to the Sunshine Griddle and see if I can get my coffee drink that I've been trying to get for a while. Every time I come, it's either closed or they actually uh, didn't accept credit cards one day. I think it was cash only and I was like, I don't have any cash. So this will be, I think, my fourth attempt trying to get this coffee drink here. It's like a, it's a uh, coffee cocktail, basically, and it, it sounded great, and I tried to get it many of times. It was closed, or I, that one time I went there, they were just like, sorry, it's cash only. So fingers crossed, I think today is going to be the day. It also looks like some food and wine boots are popping up. I'm very excited for that because it's going to be back in its full like capacity. Not like the very taste of food and wine that they had. So it's going to be good. Not too much longer for now. Well, it looks like it's open. So fingers crossed they're accepting debit and credit cards and not cash only. I'm excited because there's actually two things I want to get from here. Of course, I want to try the Joffrey's Coffee Cold Brew Cocktail, and that's with milk, Kalula, coffee liqueur, and vanilla vodka, but also I wouldn't mind trying these fried cinnamon roll bites. They both look amazing. This is going to be a good combination. Ooh, look at those bad boys. Oh, that is candied bacon. Fried cinnamon rolls with cream cheese icing and candied bacon, and then I think we'll get our coffee drink here in a second. And I found my friend Corey, who's actually eating the same thing. Not yet. We're going to try them together. Oh, yeah, we are going to try them together. Never had them. I've never had them before, but I've been waiting to try this. This is the coffee one. And every time I came here, last time I came here to get this, uh, they were closed. And then I came back again, and they were cash only. So I was like, I'm going to get these one day. And today's the day. Look at that. <laughs> Put these right here. There we go. Are we going to cheers? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Oh, they're filled. That's good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I feel like I just threw it all over my face. Oh, yeah. I like it. The bacon is smoky. Is that apple inside there? I think so. It's apple. It's, it's like, like a, a cinnamon apple filling. Oh, yeah. This is good. I like it. That was really cool to sit down and eat these with my friend Corey. But take a look on the inside there. That is an apple filling. Isn't that phenomenal? I didn't even know that was happening. So good. These are probably my new favorite desserts for Flower and Garden. And I feel like that's kind of a sad thing because Flower and Garden is ending soon. It is very, very delicious though. And I'm glad I got the coffee drink. Wash it down because it is sweet. It's like super sweet, but very delicious. And the coffee, very licorice. Licorice. <laughs> It has a lot of liquor in it. How do you say that? It's very high in liquor content. It's very licorice. Like, I can't taste the coffee. I can taste the vanilla vodka, the Kalula, the coffee liqueur, the milk, but I can't taste the cold brew. Still very good though. It'll definitely give you the energy and the tingly feelings after drinking a strong cocktail. So, so it's a winner. Getting these together though is a great combination because it's coffee and a cinnamon roll. So it's perfect, cinnamon roll and coffee. I like them. Now that we got done eating our snack and drinking our drink, we're gonna go to another ride. I was gonna touch back to Soren, but I think I'm gonna go out to Spaceship Earth because I'm gonna meet up with another friend. I already met up with Corey from Corey Meets World and he was live streaming actually while we were trying those cinnamon rolls for the first time. And now I'm gonna go meet another friend. I really have to say though, this is a strong coffee cocktail. Like I can feel the burn a little bit once you get down to the bottom of things. I mean, it's good though. It does the trick, like I said. Looks like we came back at the right time because now it's a walk on. Before there was a big line going that way. Now we can just kind of walk on and smell Rome burning. 
Now, I'm not saying you couldn't smell these smells before, but I tell you what, you sell them a lot more now. I, I smelled Rome burning as I was walking in here. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I'll show you when we get in here, but it's one of the best smells at Epcot. During your slow moving journey, your time machine will slowly rotate back. <laughs> I have to be upfront and honest with you guys. I feel like Rome Burning is probably my favorite Disney smell. I mean, I think it ranks up there with Main Street USA and also Pirates of the Caribbean, but Rome Burning, I mean, let me know in the comments, like I said before, like, let me know what your favorite smell is on a ride and also what part you think has the best smells themselves. But Rome Burning, <laughs> that's my choice. I love it so much. Now I feel like we just did a complete 360 there. So funny how it actually played out. I was gonna go to Soren right afterwards, but I came this way and then I ran into my friend Denise and I wanted to say hi to her and then they had to go to the Disney Springs. So since I was in the front of the park, that's why I rode Spaceship Earth. But hi Denise. Another thing is, is we talk about Soren because it has multiple different scenes where they have different smells actually going on. But let's not forget the land because that is a boat ride and it has a very unique smell to it. So I think we're going to do the land and Soren. I think it's why not, right? But before we head into the land, I don't want to break that wonderful rotation. So maybe we'll find ourselves a drink or a snack somewhere along the route. Maybe we might have to go a little bit further. I know we have this stand over here. They have Mickey pretzels, Bud Light, and slushies. But I wonder about that one flower and garden stand that's right there. I don't have a clue of what they got at this stand because this is one of those stands that when the festival first started, it was only open on the weekends. So I never gotten anything from here. And I'm kind of interested now. And like since flower and garden is gonna be ending, like I think July, so just a couple of weeks or days away, I want to try to get a little bit from everywhere. Looks like it's got grilled baby vegetables, a seared salmon, a strawberry mousse with chocolate crisp pearls, a blurred orange fresha, a cookie butter warms and dirt, and a bottle of water. Not too many things on this stand, not even anything, any alcohol. So maybe I might just get that blood orange drink, see what it tastes like, and maybe a strawberry mousse. Yeah. This strawberry mousse looks really impressive. I can't believe I missed this too. I'm finding all these great snacks at the end of Flower and Garden Festival. I feel like I should have gotten a lot more of them while it was like the height of the hype. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, this is probably the longest festival they've had. It's been going on for like two months now. And I remember the opening day I came out and we did almost all the boots that were in World Showcase. So these are the ones that are like around the uh, outskirts, like kind of Future World and World Showcase but in between. You know what I mean? Look at this though. It's a strawberry mousse and it looks like it's got little chocolate crispers right here. And you get some gummy worms and then a blood orange drink. Very fancy. I'm gonna attempt to get everything in one bite. So a little bit of the mousse, a little bit of the strawberry, and of course, a gummy worm. Like you gotta get it all, one bite. Oh, wow. <laughs> this looks so funny. Okay, here we go. Wow, that is so flavorful. Look, I didn't even know it, but the chocolate balls are inside here. Look at that. 
so amazing. I really do like it a lot. And I can't believe I've been sleeping on these amazing desserts. I still think the cinnamon rolls are better, but this is really good as well. Now we're gonna give this blood orange drink a little try. Oh, that's refreshing. That's very refreshing. Holy moly. I feel good. I could drink this on a hot day. I could drink this on a cold day. Probably a warm day. Yeah. Hi, how are ya? <laughs> I like it. Both of these are just really fruity and delicious. I wish they made this like in an alcohol version. I would love to try that. It's probably going to be amazing, but I enjoy it a lot. Like this is a good combination. The flavorful kitchen really makes me feel fresh. Look, I ate all of that. I mean, oh, I didn't eat my last gummy worm. I forgot I was saving that, so I gotta grab it before I throw it away. Now we need to get on over to the land pavilion, but first take a look at this cotton candy sky. This is unbelievable, right? So gorgeous. I love Florida. I love it. <laughs> Literally, I am all about the sunsets and the sunrises, and right now this is just such a beautiful, beautiful sunset. I wish I could see it more, but it's too far down. It's too far down. <laughs> Another thing I really want to point out is now you can walk around indoors without the mask. So that means you can also get AC without the mask. Once they took away the mask outside policy, they closed down all of the uh, mask-free zones. So there was nowhere indoors you can actually sit down and get some AC without wearing your mask. But now, everything's fair game. And I think we're gonna hop into the land because it's a zero minute wait. I'm hoping that they actually took the plexiglass in between the dividers on the boats. I feel like this ride itself was one that the plexiglass absolutely destroyed the experience. So I'm very happy to announce the plexiglass is gone. Look at that. So amazing. Like they literally had the, the, it wasn't even plexiglass, it was like some kind of plastic material, but it was in between every single one. And now everything's visible. Oh boy, and this is what I was talking about, the smell. You can smell it right here. Oh yeah, this is where you smell the good stuff. <laughs> it's so amazing. scientists from Epcot and the U.S. This is really nice to be able to just ride without the mask on in here too. <laughs> Sometimes when you come through here, there is a certain smell, but it's not a pleasant one. We got tilapias and we got bass and even like some alligators that used to be alligators up there. So it was kind of like a swampy smell. But I, since they took the alligators out, I don't think it smells that bad anymore. Why do you think all those catfishes are like that? It kind of looks like they're waving at us, doesn't it? But then when you get in here, you also get a nice smell of lemongrass and then also sunflowers. Oh, look at the Mickey right there. Yeah, this is nice. Living with the land was a perfect ride for smells and honestly I didn't actually realize how many amazing smells they had in there. I guess it all depends on the vegetables but like if you get in there you smell the water, the bromine, you smell the lemongrass literally was so distinct when I first walked like when we first floored it, floated, it, floated it into the room but also like the seafood smell inside the uh, fish area there's a lot of smells happening in there. 
And now we're gonna head on in to probably the overall most unique smelling ride. Except for Flight of Passage, I feel like that's up there with Soren, but there are so many different smells in this ride, and I love them all. I don't think there's one that I don't love. And it said 20 minutes is the wait time, but the uh, cast member out front said it's basically a walk-on, so I'm all for it. <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited. Soren is one of my all-time favorite rides. We're soaring, we're flying. Since it's just about a walk-on, hopefully they'll let me do my selection, like my preferred seating arrangement, may I say. I like to be in theater C, because this is the newest theater, so if you want the fresh screen and the fresh smells, I go with the new theater. I mean, it's not new new, but it's the newest. And then we're gonna request B row one. B1, so CB1. CB1 is the way to go. Best seat on Soren anywhere, in either. This way, if you're in B, you're directly in the middle, and if you go row one, you're at the highest level, so you have no feet in your face while you're soaring. Even in walking in to the theater itself, I can smell the sense of soaring already. Oh, <laughs> one, yeah. Ooh, yes. Look at this. Front and center. Well, not center, because I'm gonna go all the way down, but still, the best seat in the house. I do, of course, miss the orange smells for Soarin' Over California. That was my favorite Soarin' scent out of all of them. And maybe eventually I'll make my way over to Disneyland to smell it once again. But until then, this is gonna do. This is gonna be good.
is such an amazing ride. And uh, we were actually riding with a bunch of people that never rode the ride before. So like just hearing their expressions and their excitement when you didn't like when you dip into the different scenes, it made it so much more better. It actually kind of made me teary eyed. Like I get happy when I see other people happy, especially in Walt Disney World. That's why I love it here so much. Like I get so much excitement. I wish that I can make like magic for other people. That's why I enjoy making these videos so much is when I get that feedback that people enjoy the videos, I feel like I'm doing something great and creating happiness like the rides or Disney does. And I don't know, it just felt so good. It made the ride so much better just hearing them exciting. And then afterwards everyone was clapping and <laughs> I could ride that ride a million times. And if I had the same people that I was riding with on my row, it would be amazing each time. Oh wow, we went into Soren. Well, we went into the land. Now don't forget we rode two rides in there. And then we come back out, it's, it's pitch dark. Can you believe it? Night and day. Anyways, I think that's gonna do it for me today. I had so much fun doing this video actually Just thinking about all the amazing smells and what I love about Disney I'm sure a lot of people are probably watching this video like why is this guy so like why does he care so much about the smells on rides? But if you're a true Disney fan, I think you'll get it because like smell really does trigger memories and I feel like it has a lot to do with like happy feelings for me so I decided to come on and made that video it made sense to me so I hope you enjoyed it and uh, don't forget to let me know what your favorite ride smell is and what park has the best ride smells overall like I said I think Epcot wins and definitely Spaceship Earth for me and uh, yeah that's gonna do it we'll see you next time bye look at that reflection of Spaceship Earth though on the way out isn't that beautiful? Oh, we can just listen to music and just stare at it for a little bit.